to open the session of New Era of Hope, Shaping the Future of Rare Diseases Therapeutics. We have amazing speakers, patients, families, pharmaceutical companies, industry, researchers, physicians. I really, really invite you to listen, to take a glance of what is it a rare disease. So I would like to open this session with a great honor to invite Alistair Greenfell, President Europe, Middle East, Africa, and South Asia of Aquivia. Thank you very much. Without going into too much uh, detail and emotion, that video made me quite upset because in my speech I talked about my own daughter, um, having a rare disease and knocking at doors, not knowing, and I mentioned earlier about needle in a haystack, that's exactly what it's like, and that's why I believe passionately that patient associations are so, so important, not just as a, a group who understand what they talk about in rare diseases, but as a support group, as a network group, and as an outlet, and you can't underestimate that when your child is in intensive care. It's a very uh, difficult time. Okay, so I also, after my speech, in essence, my speech was doing two things. It was talking about um, how to bring more research into Israel. And in 30 seconds, Israel has a very unique set of capabilities. Um, you have a very broad um, genetic footprint. You have incredible data assets. You have very vocal patient associations. And as I said in my speech, one of the biggest issues that we have in clinical research is trying to find patients, understand what the issue is with rare diseases, design protocols that work in the real world without guessing. And I passionately believe that data analytics, artificial intelligence, combined with the power of patient uh, organizations can make a big, big difference. And so that was the essence of my speech. No country in the world, and we operate in 100 countries, in my experience, has got the capabilities that Israel has. And I believe that Israel uh, can basically design protocols, not just for patients here in Israel, but amplify that to global patient populations through the EMA and FDA. And I think that's a benefit to Israel from a patient perspective, but it's a huge economic potential benefit. So that was it in kind of one minute, okay? That was the speech today. Since that speech, I've bumped into three people, and one of them's in the room today. And, and, and one of the people who said to me, she says, you know, <clears throat> I, I was working on rare diseases 30 years ago, and what's changed? Um, because it seems to be the same issue. So I'm going to try and talk about what's changed and why I believe and why I'm optimistic about the future in just a few minutes. So most of the people in this room know this. So I won't dwell too much on it. But there is a huge evolution happening um, from small molecules, which are relatively straightforward medicines, all the way through to what Dr. Weiss talked about today, which is very much personalized medicines. And this has a huge potential benefit for rare diseases. Um, the evidence behind this is, you know, last year um, we saw first approval for sickle cell anemia, um, Kiskavi, uh, which is a huge step forward and huge advancement uh, through CRISPR technology. And CRISPR, just if those of you who don't know, put very simply, is a much more flexible, uh, eff very effective technology that is also simple to use. And so, why to believe rare diseases are going to be um, better handled in the future is because the technology that we heard all the way through today is converging with the biology, and I think this is a huge step forward. The other reason to believe is, do you want to just stay there and I'll just, <laughs> I'll just do this, it might be a bit easier. Okay, thank you. Just forward, yeah, I, I do know that, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The other reason to believe, honestly, is the money's coming in. So, you know, one of the other reasons why there hasn't been so much clinical advancement in rare disease in the last 20 years is, honestly speaking, the, the, the research money from the industry has gone into oncology, into CNS, and into other areas. And for the reasons I called out in my speech, it's very, there is a huge funding challenge right now in healthcare systems. And so it's getting increasingly difficult to justify the value of medicines to payers and providers. And just to give you some statistics, when you launch an innovative pharmaceutical medicine, Five years after launch, nine countries generate 85% of all sales, okay? So healthcare systems are under huge, huge pressure. 
Rare diseases get under the threshold when it comes to pricing. Why? Because you're typically talking about low volume of patients, even if you've got a high price. And so from a life sciences perspective, that is an interesting proposition because it doesn't kill the healthcare budgets, but it also provides you with large returns, okay? And so what you've seen is an explosion in clinical research into this area. And 50% of phase one to three studies now are in rare indications, and a big chunk of that is in oncology. That was not the case 10 years ago. So yes, the intersect between clinical research, biology, technology is absolutely making strides, but you cannot do that without an economic incentive. And this is the result, the perverse result, if you will, of healthcare system funding. And this is why you're seeing so much money pouring into rare diseases. Now I mentioned today why Israel is, is different. And you really do have amazing capabilities. You have phenomenal physician experience. And because of the genetic makeup and predisposition, that plays in Israel's favor. You also have incredible medical facilities. And for those of you who didn't hear my speech, I called out Emek, which I was privileged to, um, uh, to go up to the north last year and see with my own eyes. We have lots of, lots of amazing capabilities here. But when you look at what actually happens on a per capita basis, when you look at, in terms of advancements per 100,000, Israel is punching above its weight. And so that is a good thing for Israel, no doubt. But what I try to call out today is how do we do more in Israel for patients in Israel? How do we leverage the amazing physician capabilities, patient groups with the incredible genomics and data capabilities we have to in essence have Israel as the creator of protocols and the designer of trials globally? Because I can tell you, and you heard the statistic today, the, the misdiagnosis of rare diseases is on, on average 5.5 times, and that's the average. Quite often it's 10, 11, 12 times. And from a product return perspective, not even talking about the patient, the unbelievable patient pain that causes, if you can minimize that protocol to two or three changes, it makes a huge difference to returns. And that's what I think is so powerful about the capabilities that we have here in Israel. So I wanted to just sum up today to add on to what I spoke about this morning by saying, look, I do believe that rare diseases have turned a precipice. They've turned a corner from a research perspective. And if you'd asked me five or six years ago why that would have been, I would have said it's purely because of the advancement in biology and technology. It's actually not. It's actually because you've got patient organizations who are much more organized and who are much more willing to take on governments You've also got the, the fact that the economic reality now plays in favor and is a massive, massive tailwind to the life sciences recruiting in this area and doing research in this area. And I remind you of the statistic I called out today. Last year, 44% of all new clinical trial startups were in rare diseases. That's why now versus 30 years is the reason to believe why this is the dawn of rare diseases. And my God, I hope it works because 75% of rare diseases adversely affect children. Thank you very much for your kind feedback today and also today and listening to me. Thank you.